so we have very few students in the class any reason why the strength is very low so only 14 people right now there is any reason why the strength is very low right now guys can you hear me uh, so any reason why the strength is extremely low it's usually more than 60 by now Ah, uh, Prakash, I've become better now. Uh, I want to apologize to all of you that I couldn't take the last two classes. The doctor had recommended me to take rest, so it was not even. I applied leave at office also. I was basically on leave, and uh, yeah. But let's continue. So from today, it will be a regular classes. All right. Um, okay, we still have only twenty-one people. I'm thinking, should I wait or should I start the class? Is what I'm trying to think. What do you guys say? Wait, karo ya start karo. So today's agenda is Akshit. I'll start off with closures first. I'll finish off the concept of closures. After that, we have only the two big topics left. One is promises, and one is uh, one is async can I wait? Usi mein we'll learn about fetch also. So. We have these topics left. So, I'll start. I'll finish off closures. After that, uh, we'll still have some time. So, I'll start off with promises also. Okay, let's wait for five more minutes. Then six thirty-seven. I'll wait till six forty-two, and then I start the class. Okay. Actually, the project will take maybe two or three days only. I'll not spend a lot of time because the idea is to start off with React soon. But I'll tell you one thing honestly: we have to focus more on React projects than JavaScript projects. I mean, the way I think is the best way to go forward is basically to learn the basics of JavaScript and be as good um, at that as possible, and then focus more on the React projects because the React projects. Are are what you'll ultimately end up doing for your portfolio, or for within interviews and all of that. So it art project nahi hoga. Project will start next week. Most probably on Tuesday or something. So I think next week we'll wrap up JavaScript and and maybe we'll start React. I'm not sure, depending on the project also. So let's see. <clears throat> They have not joined. The September batch has not joined. Yeah, we ordered Rohini. Join not can't do it. But why is that? No, but I have told Rohini. So tell me. One minute. Let's call up Rohini. One second.
Yeah, guys, I just spoke to them. Basically, they forgot to change the times. So they'll be joining at around 7 o'clock. So what I'll do is, till then, I'll take up something else, which we can cover just, you know, uh, just, I mean, I'll, I'll probably take up some, like, a revision class. I'll ask some important questions, which you guys can answer. Once they also start joining, I'll take up the uh, actual topics, okay? Does that work? All right, so I'll start sharing my screen and I'm going to ask you guys some important like questions in uh, JavaScript and you guys can answer, okay? Let me start sharing. Okay, I hope you guys can see my screen. Okay, so here what we'll start off with is uh, Okay, let's start with again a very simple question that we usually ask, right? Uh, difference between double equal to and triple equal to. So in dono ka beach me, what is the actual difference? Double equal to operator versus a triple equal to operator. Let's see how many of you remember. We had spoken about this in detail, right? In one of the earlier classes. So what is the difference between both of them? Okay, so which one is the strict operator here? Is it double or is it triple equal to? So the triple equal to is a strict operator here. So this part is basically... So Prakash, see, I'm not asking for example. I'm asking for the actual difference. Guys, I spoke about this in detail and I expect you to tell me the answer. At least one of them. That is one of you guys. I had a context I had opened up that uh, I had opened up that I I showed you guys what the algorithm is. Hi Keshav, good evening. Yes, again, the question is, what is the difference between double equal to and triple equal to? If you guys remember, I spoke about this very early on in JavaScript. And I was talking about, uh, guys, one second, I'm getting a call from Rohini. Guys, unfortunately, the September batch will not come today because their timings change not be able to do it. So they asked me to take up revision class. Okay, now I want you guys to tell me what are you guys confused on, which topics you're confused on. Okay, I'll take revision of those topics today. So I'm leaving it to you people to tell me, like just give me one topic each one of you where you feel, what have we discussed so far, we will uh, we'll do a revision of sorts, okay? Or if you prefer, I will give you questions you can answer. So what do you guys prefer? Do you guys want me to give you like uh, any quiz questions? Or do you guys uh, want me to revise something? I'm leaving it to you people. Or if you're on both, we can do both also. Okay, interview questions for JS, okay. Okay, I'll do one thing. See, I will start off with interview questions for JS right now. Okay, we'll do interview questions. And beach me if you guys think you need some explanation or revision of some topic, let me know. I'll cover that as well, okay? Okay. Yeah, so the first question was this. And only I see that of Kesha was answered it correctly. And Vipul, uh, that's exactly what I told you, what the answer is not, right? So I told you that 
बोथ ऑफ देम विल चेक फॉर टाइप एंड वैल्यू गाइस मैं एक और बार इसके बारे में टेलिंग इन डिटेल दिस लिजन वेरी केयरफुली बिकॉज दिस इज अ वेरी फ्रीक्वेंटली आस्क क्वेश्चन एंड मोस्ट ऑफ देम गेट इट इनकरेक्टली इनफैक्ट मैंने ये भी बोला था कि वेन एवर आई आज दिस क्वेश्चन ड्यूरिंग माई इंटरव्यूज I intentionally do it to to test you know how deep the understanding of JavaScript is. Now, when I ask like ten people these questions, ma, out of ten people, I can say that easily like nine of them answer it incorrectly. Okay, nine of them basically say that uh, double equal to checks for values and triple equal to checks for values and types. But that is not correct, na. Is that the most accurate answer? It's not the most accurate answer, correct? The most accurate answer here is. Double equal to and triple equal to both will check for types and values. Okay, which means that is not the difference between both of them. The actual difference between both of them is double equal to will uh, will perform type conversion. Okay, or type coercion. Both of them mean the same thing. So it it performs type conversion or type coercion in case one of the types is different. ठीक है Like left side pe or right side pe, if the types are not the same, then double equal to will perform a type conversion or type coercion, and then it checks it checks their value. Okay, it tries to convert one type to the other type. It tries to make both the same types basically, and then it it actually compares the values. Okay, it doesn't perform type conversion all the time. It only performs the type conversion only if one I mean, only if the types are different on either sides, right? Like, for example, if we take this example of uh, one second, huh? Let's say that I have a string, uh, string one, double equal to number one. In this case, what is happening? This number one will be converted to a string one. Then behind the scenes, this is what happens, and then. Once the conversion is uh, is complete, then they will be actually compared. Okay, that's why going forward, whenever people ask you what is the difference, na, don't just give them an example. Example, ne dena amko. Okay, you have to give them an actual explanation of what is happening behind the scenes. In case both the types are same, then no conversion happens. Okay, the values are. uh the values are compared directly like this as you can see okay but if you have a triple equal to triple equal to is a strict comparison operator okay it requires both the types to be the same only then it will perform the uh, will perform the comparison if one of the types is different from the other triple equal to will simply return false doesn't care what the what the actual values are it simply returns false if i change this to a string right now it, okay no comp, uh, no type conversion or type coercion actually happens in this case yahan par nahi hoga type conversion theek hai because triple equal to here is a strict comparison operator it doesn't change anything <coughs> guys does this make sense ओके गाइस एक काम करेंगे सी अभी तक आई हैव नेवर लाइक हर्ड योर वॉइसेस राइट सो आई वुड प्रेफर इट टू बी लाइक अ रियल इंटरव्यू ओके सी आई विल आस्क क्वेश्चंस आई वांट यू गाइस टू आंसर इट डोंट फील शाय एट ऑल डोंट हेसिटेट टू लाइक बिल्कुल भी मत डरो लाइक इट्स नॉट अबाउट गेटिंग द आंसर राइट इट्स अबाउट नोइंग वेयर यू गाइस आर एट राइट सो आई विल आस्क यू सम क्वेश्चंस एंड एनीवन कैन अनम्यूट देमसेल्व्स एंड दे कैन टॉक एंड दे कैन आंसर it's totally fine if the answer is incorrect because that is not the point of this the point is just to know where you guys are at okay does it make sense guys are you okay with this so it will also help you with other things like uh, how would you speak right so let's say that uh, there is a question okay which i asked you and you guys give an answer in case the answer is not entirely correct okay uh, i can correct you right i can tell you that this is not the perfect way to frame the answer If you frame it like this, it will be even better. So I'll even be able to guide you guys on how to answer the questions, because sometimes you might know the answer correctly, 
but the way you present it might not be entirely right and guys let me tell you something uh, knowing something is just like half just like half of the thing the rest half of the thing is to present it correctly okay because i will not be able to guess now i'll not uh, i can't assume that nahi isko to pata hai mujhe sirf bolna nahi aata i can't think like that na jo bhi tum bologe i'll just go on that right i can't assume thing so isliye um the way you present the answer also is very very important theek hai okay now last the next question now okay um what is okay we have a method called as the call method right on every function what is the call what is the purpose of the call method i want someone to unmute themselves and answer this question what is the purpose of the call method guys come on don't hesitate okay please uh please try to answer this i'm sure you guys already know what the what the answer is it's it's okay if you don't know the uh, the entire answer also okay just don't get nervous it's it just us theek okay? hai who can answer keshav want to give it a try go ahead prakash hello go ahead prakash go ahead yeah i can hear you yes sir uh, the call method is a just like honor okay Just uh, like just what? Honor as an argument. It pass honor as an argument. Okay. And uh, call method is belonging to the uh, call mm-hmm. method is belonging to another object. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'll tell you what, Prakash. So I know what you're trying to say. Yes, sir. I know that you know the correct answer. अगर तुम कोड करेगे तो मुझे पता है कि you'll get the correct answer. But <clears throat> your delivery is not correct. I mean, what you're trying to say is not entirely accurate. See, I know that uh, <clears throat> because I know you, I know that you know the answer. But others might not know about you, right? In that case, if you give this answer, na, then I might not. Ah, uh, it's not entirely accurate. Okay. Yes, sir. Ah. Uh, Okay, so I got two more. This one, uh, I'll put you on on mute, Prakash. Okay, I'm going to accept uh, Tanzila first. Go ahead, Tanzila. Tanzila, is there? Okay, Tanzila has left. Okay, uh, Mangesh, go ahead. Sir, we have uh, function, so uh, it it will be uh, so perform some task, and uh, if uh, we are performing a task repeatedly, so so that we create this uh, functions repeatedly. So in case of that, uh, we we will call the function. uh and execute that function re- uh whenever we be, we will be call mm, that's not quite right no mangesh let's say that i have a function like this i have function call greet will seem to do a console log of hello let's say okay you are saying that whenever i want to call the function multiple times i should use uh, the call method is it yes sir but i can do it just like this na मैं ये भी मल्टीपल टाइम्स कॉल करेगा ना लाइक यस सर बट वी विल नॉट परफॉर्म ग्रिड डेफिनेशन रिपीटेडली व्हाट डेफिनेशन सॉरी कंसोल लॉग हेलो हां दिस मेथड दिस डेफिनेशन नॉट परफॉर्म रिपीटेड नो नो सो आई मीन व्हाट यू आर सेइंग बेसिकली यू आर सेइंग दैट वी कैन यूज इट लाइक दिस 
instead of doing this you're saying you do this right yes but both are the same like what you're doing here what you're doing here both are exactly the same yes ठीक है yes, so that sir, is yes. not the answer then but good attempt man okay good attempt cool so i'll put you on mute theek hai uh go ahead tanzila go ahead go ahead yeah uh, like call method is used to call a function with another object as a first argument or like a call method is a type of method that is used to write a function that can be used on different objects perfect basically I, uh, the methods yeah. of call, call method is equal to the apply method like functionalities are equal perfect perfect very good uh, i'll tell you how you can tweak it a little bit more but first we have himanshu as well i'll ask i'll uh, uh, once i get the answer from him i'll tell you how we can make it a little bit more better but very good answer tanjila okay uh, go ahead himanshu Himanshu, drop. Himanshu, are you there? Okay. Himanshu is dropped off. So basically, uh, the answer is what Tanzila has given. Basically, see, we use the call method to invoke a function using a different object. Okay, that is the whole purpose of the call method. Now, that's exactly what I asked. Right? I didn't ask you that. what are the arguments that call method takes all i'm asking is what is the purpose and the actual answer is we can use the call method to invoke a function using different context okay by context i mean different objects when i have a user one like this which has an id of let's say 100 i'll have a user two here and this has a id of 200 okay <clears throat> within this i want to change what the this keyword will refer to theek hai right now when i call the greet function directly guys when i call the greet function directly what do you think <coughs> what do you think the this keyword would refer to right now we'll start with our rules we had we had certain rules na us rules mein what was the first rule Okay, uh, guys. So my first question is: If you remember, uh, we had discussed about how to find out what the this keyword is all about, right? Abi, this keyword, jo hai, if you have to find what is the first rule, we had like six to seven rules, na? Us rule me, what was the first rule? Dot ka tha na? If you remember, dot. Ha, so is there a dot here? let's do one thing let's i'll wait i will uh, i'll do a quick revision of the this keyword okay this keyword because this way you guys will get a good understanding okay see first of all you have to understand ki this keyword ka value dhoondne ke liye we should be looking at the function definition or the function invocation that is the first question okay if you want to know what the this keyword is within a function should we be looking at the function ka definition or the function ka invocation yeah we have to get the function invocation right now there are different types we can uh, we can find out what the this keyword is all about the first type is implicit binding na okay we'll take a simple example i'll say const user is equal to name will be aditya and age will be this much and let's add a greet method do console.log of hello my name is this dot name okay so observe something see guys one second some is the door
Yeah, guys. So I was saying that if you observe here, first of all, the question is how do we know what the this keyword is all about here? Okay. But just by looking at the function definition, is it possible to find out what the this keyword is? It's not possible to find out. Okay. The way we'll find out is is how the function will actually be called. Okay. We will be calling this function right now by doing user dot greet. When we do user dot greet, observe what I get back. I get back hello. My name is Aditya because this this keyword here is pointing to this object because whenever you want to find out what the this keyword is, you have to look first of all at where the function was invoked. And the function was invoked here. Okay. The first rule is to check if there is a dot. Now, yes, there is a dot. Okay. And is there an object left of the whatever object is there to the left of the dot, which is this one, that becomes a this keyword. Okay. That is the first rule. Any questions here, guys? Okay, so this is basically the implicit binding. So again, I'll just repeat this one last time. Whenever you want to find out what is the this keyword pointing to, we have to look at the function definition. Okay. Once you find out where the function is being called, you look at the dot and you look to the left of the dot. And this object right here will become the this keyword. Okay. But this is what we call as implicit binding. Okay. It's implicit binding because we are not telling that that this keyword has to point to this user object. Okay. That this keyword is, is automatically or implicitly bound to <clears throat> this object right here. This is happening implicitly or automatically, right? I'm nowhere mentioning that that this keyword here should point to user object. I'm mentioning it anywhere here. I'm not right. This connection right here, this link between the this keyword here and the user object is happening implicitly or automatically. That's why it's called as implicit binding. Okay. Let's do one more example. I'll add mother name. I'll say Udaya and I'll say greet function within this. I'll just copy and paste the same thing here. Okay. Now when I do user dot mother dot greet. Okay. Okay. Again, the same question. Now I want to find out what is the, this keyword within this function. Okay. What is the first thing we do to find out what is the, this keyword? We first of all, go to where the function was invoked. The function was invoked right here. Okay. And we first of all check if there is a dot here. There is a dot right here. Okay. Dot ke left mein jo bhi hai, that becomes the this keyword of uh, within this function, which means that the, this keyword is pointing to the mother object this time. Guys, wherever the function is being called. अगर उसका एक डॉट है उस डॉट के लेफ्ट पे जो भी ऑब्जेक्ट है वही दिस कीवर्ड बनेगा बस एज बेसिकली ये पूरा मैंने पढ़ाया था उस दिन इन लॉट ऑफ डिटेल इफ यू गाइस हैड जस्ट गॉन थ्रू द रिकॉर्डिंग अगेन यू हैव एक्चुअली नोन इट बट इट्स ओके विल रिवाइज इट नाउ ठीक है यहां तक इज इट क्लियर Okay, and please ask me if you still have any questions, guys. Don't keep any confusion in your head. Okay. And the class started Tuskeen at uh, at six thirty. Uh, Himanshu, how do you know that?
हिमांशु हाउ डू नो दैट हिमांशु अच्छा मुझे तो दे टोल्ड मी दैट अभिषेक एम फाइन नाउ थैंक यू यस आई वाज टोल्ड दैट दे वोंट बी जॉइन टुडे बट इट्स ओके इफ दे जॉइन देन कंटिन्यू विद द एक्चुअल क्लास आई स्टॉप द रिवीजन ठीक है सो दिस वाज ऑल अबाउट इंप्लिसिट बाइंडिंग बिकॉज़ अगेन रिमेंबर व्हाट इज इंप्लिसिट बाइंडिंग Taskin, what time do you prefer? I mean, till Ramadan is on. Okay, I can do seven p.m. Not a problem. Oh, uh, can you just tell me till when is Ramadan? I don't know the dates exactly. Can you just tell me till when it is? Ah, it's going on, uh, but it'll. Uh, do you have an exact date? Twenty second April, like yeah. Okay, till then, then we'll do uh, seven p.m. Say, okay. All right, guys. Let's continue then. Again, like I said, uh, see, this thing is called implicit binding because uh, the binding between the this keyword and the object. is is automatic or implicit we don't uh, bind it specially right okay i'll just open a vs code for once ek minute let's uh, try and drop this all right let's go live Right. so like i'm saying that is what we call as implicit binding but now let's say ki, uh, if i want to specifically tell a function what should be the this keyword inside that theek hai mujhe explicitly bolna hai ki within this function the this keyword will be this object bol ke theek hai we can use explicit binding for that right using explicit binding we can tell explicitly uh taskin so today's topic is basically revision of javascript jo bhi maine already padha hai then is doing a revision of that because september that is not joined today theek hai ha so now what is explicit binding so explicit binding is all about you you explicitly telling a function what should be the this keyword within that function like for example if you have a function like what i already spoke about great and then i do a console log of let's say uh this dot name or let's say i was called by this dot name okay when i call this function i want to explicitly tell which object that this keyword will be pointing to let's say that i have a few objects here const user1 is name will be steve const user2 name will be saito okay <clears throat> so i can explicitly tell this function that when this function is being called i want to call it with this object as the context now this word called context is very important it simply means ki which object is calling a function that's it so a context is nothing but an object like which object is the main uh, main focal point or the main focus while calling a specific function theek okay? hai now i'm going to call the greet function using the call method and the call method always accepts uh, the this context right of this keyword we can say that okay when i call this greet function this time i want the this keyword to point to user 1 Okay, so what this means is this time I'm calling the greet function, and I'm passing in user one as the context, which means that this keyword inside the greet function will now be user one. Okay, that is the actual purpose of the call method. The call method is used to change uh, 
the context of a specific function okay we can do the same thing using apply as well okay it will be here the same exact way i can change the context as well right here like user 2 is uh, i can do user 2 this one is also possible but what is the benefit of using apply guys what kind of an argument can i pass after user 2 with an apply Let's say that I'm using the call method again, and this grid accepts a couple of arguments. Let's say it accepts uh, maybe city and country or whatever. Okay. Uh, okay, then it's city, state, and country. It accepts uh, three things. I have an array right now. Const, I'll say details is equal to, it'll be an array of Hyderabad and Telangana and India. Okay. I want to pass these three arguments inside the grid function when I'm using dot call. So what should I do? I can either do a dot, dot, dot details. Okay. Now I can basically uh, do, basically do this dot city, this dot state, and this dot country like this oh, from this dot i'm sorry it's a city right because they're all the parameters uh, on this keyword so now we'll get this it works perfectly right now okay <clears throat> but if i let's say that i'm using an an old browser which does not support the triple equal uh, triple dot because guys, remember key the spread operator right here, the spread operator did not exist until recently. Okay, this is an ES6 ka feature. And lot of the old browsers do not support ES6. Always remember this. Okay. Uh, all the ES6 and above ka features, they are not supported by very old browsers. Okay. If that is the case, then uh, what can I do to pass these three things? inside this function as the arguments see one way is obviously i can do uh, details of zero i can do details of one so details of two right using this what happens can able to pass every single argument here individually but if you don't want to do this you can simply use the apply method and you can simply supply the entire details array directly. What this will happen is it'll, it'll, uh, the apply method here will simply replace this thing with the individual values like this. That is what the apply method basically does. It replaces uh, this thing, the array here. It replaces this with the individual values just like this. Okay. When I save now, I get the same exact answer again. Does this make sense, guys? Okay. Now, what if I I want to um, I want to create a new function which has a different context? I don't want to basically call uh, the function immediately. I want to simply return a new function with a different context, with a different object, basically. So what can I do in that case? Ahimanchu, one second. <clears throat> Go ahead, Ahimanchu. Sir, actually, in uh -huh. September batch, their class is ongoing and some students have joined, but they have not joined the instructor, so they are showing on their portal. So, uh, around 15 minutes, sir. So, what Rohini told me was that their class will not be able to do it. Their class will be on Monday. Okay. 
तो आज मुझे okay, इसीलिए okay. आपका रिवीजन लेने को बोला है बस ओके सर ओके उनको बोल दो वो ओके सर हम्म एक्चुअली उनके साइड से मिस हुआ था Uh, I told them long back they'll be taking 6:30 classes on every Friday, so they had missed it from their end. So yeah, yeah. So like I was saying, guys. So in case I want to return a new function, which has a different this context, then I can use a bind here. Okay. But if I'm using bind, I cannot supply an array like this. It has to be individual values again, like this. Okay. But what? Dot bind will do if you observe here. I do not see this function being called because dot bind will simply bind this function with the this context and also pass these arguments. Okay, but it does not uh, does not call the function immediately. It simply returns to you a new function. <clears throat> Now what happens is whenever you call this new function. Like this, okay. This new function is special right now because within this function, it's already bound to this object, and it already has these arguments. When I hit save right now, we call this function again, and it receives the correct arguments as well. And that this keyword is pointing to this uh, this user two का object. Now. that is the main difference between bind and call see guys uh, call and bind are very very similar the only difference is when we use call we invoke the function immediately but when we use bind we do not invoke it immediately we simply return a new function that's it in the new function it already is bound to this object and it already has these arguments inside of it okay now this new function can be called at any time whatever time you want theek hai that is explicit binding any questions guys okay next what we have is we have the new binding new binding we already saw what the new keyword does let's say that we have a function call person uh we already seen so if we create a constructor function like this dot name is equal to name we get name here and we get let's say age here and this dot age is equal to age and that is it right so now uh, let's say that we had person dot prototype dot uh, greet will simply be a function Which will be the console dot log of this dot name as age of this dot age. Okay. Now what we do is we'll do a const person one is equal to a new person. We pass a couple of arguments. We'll pass like this, and we'll pass like this. what this new binding simply does is the this keyword here will point to this object okay this is called as a new binding now guys we already seen what this new binding does here. so behind the scenes remember behind the scenes it simply doing const this is equal to object dot create of person dot prototypes all of this happens behind the scenes right we already seen this because of this thing right here a person one can simply call all uh, simply call all the methods on the prototype because this new keyword here is doing this and this on behalf of us when i hit save i get this correct answer right here okay so this is all <coughs> what you call as a new binding okay this case the this keyword will simply be whatever the instance of this constructor function is which means that ye jo instance hai is constructor function ka this will become the this keyword
okay cool so next actually what we have is the lexical binding right so lexical binding kya hai so this is all about the arrow functions now we uh, so are yeah, i've told you guys that arrow functions they do not have their own this keyword theek okay? hai what that means is i create a user object again david let's have a great function i'll create another arrow function now i'll just say const foo is called an arrow function i'll do console log of uh, Did this. When I call uh, this foo function right here, okay. Now let's see what happens. I am going to call user dot greet. When I call user dot greet ka function, or let me just do this. I'll just move. See when I'm calling user dot greet guys, within the greet function, okay. What is the this keyword pointing to? the user object how do we know that see we follow the same rule again okay uh, if we want to find out what is the this keyword within a function we first of all go and look at the function invocation now this is the function invocation okay uh, now here right here we have a dot here na so dot ke left pe jo bhi object hai that will become this keyword of this greet ka function which means that right here that this keyword is pointing to the user object now within this function here we have created one arrow function and we have called it now if we want to know what is the this keyword within an arrow function you simply look at what is the this keyword within a parent function right because the arrow functions they do not have their own this keyword they always borrow it from their parent function ठीक है, whatever the this keyword is within the parent function, that is the this keyword within this function right here. ठीक है, I've called this function within this function here. The this keyword will simply be whatever this keyword is within the parent function. Okay, because of that, when I console log this, I get the user object again, because the this keyword here is simply the user object again. it's simply borrowing it okay because arrow functions they do not have their own this keyword which means you cannot apply any of those earlier uh, the earlier uh, rules that we have we cannot look at the dot we cannot look at the new we can't do any of those we have to simply look at what is the this keyword within the parent function that's it does this make sense guys okay now one more thing let's say that within this foo function here i have one more function called const bar okay i'm calling foo i'm creating bar i'll call bar also within this i'll do a console.log on this keyword now again let's see what actually happens so first of all i'm calling user dot greet which means that within the greet function that this keyword will be user object which is perfect theek okay? hai once once i'm inside the greet function i create the foo function and i call that okay <clears throat> once i call this what happens uh we come inside this now within the foo ka function what is the this keyword guys yes so it is a user object again because the arrow function don't have their own this keyword they borrow it from their parent theek okay? hai within the foo function again i have an arrow function which i'm calling now within this bar function again what is the this keyword 
the user object again. Very good. Because see, the arrow functions again don't have their own this keyword. They get it from the parent. Okay. One important point here is the arrow functions will keep searching for a normal function. ठीक है जब तक नहीं मिलता है तब तक वो सर्च करता रहेगा विच मीन्स दैट वेन वी कॉल द बार फंक्शन वी स्टार्ट फ्रॉम ह्योर दिस एन एरो फंक्शन सो वी गो वन लेवल अप नो दिस इज ऑल्सो एन एरो फंक्शन एंड हेंस वी गो वन लेवल अप ह्योर नो दिस इज अ नॉर्मल फंक्शन ओके वी फाइनली फाउंड अ नॉर्मल फंक्शन विथ इन दिस नॉर्मल फंक्शन वॉट एवर इज द दिस की वर्ड that will be the user uh, uh, that will be the this keyword of this function or uh, as well okay so the arrow functions will keep going one level up until they find a normal function once they find a normal function whatever is the this keyword there that will be borrowed by that arrow function make sense guys what about the others okay cool so yes yeah, so this was about the um, lexical thing now next thing is so in case none of the things actually work like jo bhi rules the hamare if none of them actually work then it will be window binding by default which means that the con I mean the this keyword within the function will be the window object like for example function say h let's say console dot log my age is this dot h now i'm simply going to call this function like this guys okay okay if we need to find out what is the this keyword within a function what do we do first we check where the function was called the function was called here now is there a dot there is no dot okay uh which means that it is not implicit binding right next let's see if uh, uh, are we using dot call dot bind or dot apply it's not so which means it it can be explicit binding as well okay uh, what about uh, next one was what implicit explicit ke baad it was new binding no is there a new keyword anywhere here no so there's not new binding as well okay next was what next was lexical binding Oh, so is this an arrow function? Yeah, so can be lexical binding as well. See, when when none of these are satisfied, ultimately, uh, the this keyword within this function will be the window object. Okay, when none of these are satisfied, then this will obviously be the window object. right now the this keyword here if i just do a this like this if we get a window object theek okay? hai because window doesn't really have anything called as age theek okay? hai there is no property called as age on the window object that's why this give me undefined but one way to create uh, the age property on the window object is by simply doing window dot age is equal to 1000 let's say this is one way but there's one more way as well which is using var age is equal to 1000 what happens with var age of 1000 is during the memory creation phase when javascript engine will simply uh, do a scan of this file because this var is in the global execution context this h ka variable will be added to the global window object okay theek okay. hai 
any questions here guys okay we'll take a break then 7:30 uh, we'll meet at 7:41 okay uh, after coming back we'll take i'll take some more uh, interview questions okay okay guys i'll see you at 7:41 
Hi guys. Uh, let's continue the class. Do you guys have any again like revision topics or suggestions for me? Any topics that you find uh, difficult to understand or want to revise? You can guys can ask me right now. Okay, let me ask then. Ask guys some questions. Okay, so the first question I want to ask you guys is, what is a higher order function? This is the question. Who can uh, unmute and give me the answer? Again, it's totally okay if you get the answer. Okay, go ahead, Tansila. Happening. Go ahead, Keshav. Hello. Go ahead, Keshav. I can hear you. Go ahead. Sir, uh, a higher order function is function that uh, that take a function as a uh, parameter and return function as uh, and return can return a function also. That is called higher order function. Okay, one question to you, Keshav. So you're right that higher order function accepts a function as an argument. That is perfect. But is it um, um, mandatory for it to return no, a function? No, sir. No, sir. Good, good. So that is the correct answer. Okay. So basically, a higher order function is any function which accepts another function as an argument. Now the question here is, what do you call that function which is being passed as the argument? Call what do you call that? Callback function. Very good. Okay. And okay, next, um, as a follow up question, I mean, it can be Keshav or it can be anybody else again. Uh, what are first class functions? First class functions, yes, sir. Mind me, no idea. First class citizens are objects, mind me, or first class citizen, yeah, first class functions. It can be anything. Okay, sir. Same means again. Dono ka. Ah, dono ka meaning exactly same hai. Sir, first class is in sir. Uh, Java me sir functions ko hi bolte hain. Matlab. Wo kyu okay. sir wo a matlab ye kya act a object ke value ki tarah behave karte hain ki apne isko store bhi kar sakte hain. Perfect. Matlab variable me aur isko wo apne array me bhi matlab uh -huh. store kar sakte hain. Perfect. And you can return as a value, just like value return. Karte hai. Very so, good. Okay. And argument can receive it. Perfect, Akeshav. I mean, you, you gave the entire answer. Very good. So, basically, to summarize what Keshav is saying, uh, within JavaScript, uh, our functions behave like first class citizens. What that means is, the functions can behave like any other values, which means that they can either be assigned to a variable, assigned to a variable, or they can actually be passed as arguments. Okay, or uh, lastly, they can be returned from another function, right? Returned from another function. So it can be either of these three things, basically. Okay, so. Whenever we have functions within JavaScript, they behave like first class citizens, which means that they behave like any other objects or values. And hence, they can be assigned to a variable, they can be passed as arguments, they can also be returned from another function. Okay. All right. So, again, I'm going to accept all of you. Uh, go ahead, Tanzila. Sir, screen sharing Screen sharing is not happening right now. Yes, sir. Oh, shit. I'm so sorry. Take care. Avinash, you want to talk something? Okay. Yeah. So I was saying yeah, these three things is what I want to talk about. And sorry for going to share my screen. But yeah, so basically, um, within JavaScript, functions can behave as first class citizens. 
because they can do any of these three things. Okay. And to give an example of assign to a variable, kya kar sakte? let's say that we have a function, const function is just like return two. Sorry, const foo, like this. Okay. We can assign this to another variable, like let's say const uh, bar is equal to foo. Okay. When I call this bar, I'm simply calling foo. That's all I'm doing, basically, nothing else. Okay. Or if you have a, a, a one array like this, const array, uh, just like how we add numbers or strings or a boolean or an object or, or another array, we can also add a function like this. Okay, this is totally possible. Okay, so within JavaScript, it's possible. It's possible in Python also, but it's not possible in many other programming languages. And and hence that's what kind of makes JavaScript a little special, that. You can do something like this. It's totally possible in JavaScript land. Okay, that is the first thing, which is you can uh, assign a function to any variable. The second thing is again very simple. Let's say that we have a function like this. I'll call it stuff, which accepts a callback, and it'll simply call the callback. Okay, I can call this stuff function. I can pass in another function as an argument. Okay, again, what is the difference between calling this and doing uh, doing this? In this case, in this case, guys, what am I actually passing in as as an argument? Uh, so, what is the return value? It is two. Very good. So basically, in this case, the return value of this function is nothing but two. So basically, yahapur, I'm simply doing stuff of two. Again, yahapur, I'm, I'm adding, passing this function itself as an argument like this. That's why always make sure to, uh, to understand whether you have to call the function or simply pass the function because both of them are not the same thing. Both of them are very, very different. Okay. This is about the second thing, which is you pass as an argument. The third thing where you return from another function basically is let's say that you have, uh, within this, I'll create another function. I'll call it bass will simply return like three. Let's say I can return a function as well. This is also totally possible. Now just think about this guy. See, as long as you understand that a function can be treated as any other value, these things will make sense. Just like how we can assign an object to a variable, just like how we can assign an object as an argument, just like how we can also return an object from another function, you can do the same thing with functions also. Joby tum log object ke saath kar sakte ho, we can do the same thing with functions as well. Okay. So any questions here? Has any questions? Hmm. Okay, let's move on to the next one, which is um, function statement and function expression. Function statement. <clears throat> wait, uh, function statement is nothing, wait, even I'm getting a little confused. A function statement is nothing but I think the normal function, right? If I'm not wrong, shorthand for a bad statement with a function value. I, I mean, I don't hear this function statement a lot. Statement JavaScript. Oh, they're saying the function statement is a shorthand for a bad statement with a function value. Okay, I think, uh, first of all, Tansila, like, uh, I don't know what a function statement is because I've not I've not used that terminology much. But as per this book here, at least, 
what they're saying is if you have like a var uh, var foo is equal to this is what they're saying a function statement is but what i believe is a uh, function statement and function expression both are the same <clears throat> which means that basically if you create a let's say you create a function sum like this return to or they create a function sum like this and return to okay now see both are functions okay the first big difference is with respect to the memory creation uh, the memory creation phase right we spoke about execution context now think about this let's say that i change this to let's say different for example okay uh this is a normal function this is an arrow function which is a function expression okay this is normal function and this is a function expression main difference would be with respect to what happens during the memory creation phase now when you create an execution context okay the javascript engine will scan the entire file right what is the first execution context it creates tanzila yahan par yeah so it creates the uh, so it creates a global execution context now now within this global execution context within the memory component there what all are added just think about what we spoke uh, with respect to uh, the execution context okay so we have the memory creation phase first of all memory creation phase and next we have code execution phase right your execution context is created in these two phases correct now this is your execution context left side pe you have the memory component and and you have the code component here okay now within the memory component javascript in general first of all it scan through the file okay whatever variables and functions are there it will add them within the memory component here right okay now how does it add the sum function here it adds the sum function it adds the diff ka function now both are functions guys both are functions right but what is the default value which will be assigned to the sum ka variable here observe this what is the default uh, value that will be assigned to the function ha huh. so it will be uh, so it will basically be the entire function right so the sum a default value will be the entire function like this but what about this diff here diff is a const variable it may be a function but ultimately a const variable right what will be the default value of this diff ka variable right now it will be undefined okay which means that when we finally come to the code execution phase if i try to invoke the sum function here will it work <clears throat> it will work yes because javascript engine already has a function called as sum and the sum function already has the entire function body which means that when you call the sum function you will not see any issue here there is no error at all okay but if you try to call the diff function like this before it has been uh, <coughs> created what happens now they are actually calling undefined like this you're calling on the undefined function this doesn't make any sense and when you see we now see an error like this theek okay? hai because you're trying to call undefined function doesn't make any sense and hence it will uh, give an error like this this is the big difference between 
a function expression and a normal function. Make sense, Tanzila? The main the main difference is this only. No other difference. I mean, the, both of them behave the same. Of course, this is an arrow function, but if you convert this to a normal function like this, you will still get the same behavior. Still get the same exact error because we cannot access diff before initialization. That's it. Uh, this is a pretty good in uh, I mean interview question okay but the way you answer this is you talk about okay, execution context first you'll say that okay so execution context jab banaya jata hai, uh, we have two phases we have the memory creation phase and, and code execution phase so during the memory creation phase the function the normal functions will have the entire function body stored as a default value Lekin, a function expression only has the variable along with the undefined value. Ah, so this is hoisting only, na? Ah, so see, hoisting is nothing but during your memory creation phase. In the phenomena of scanning the entire file and, and adding the variables and the functions to the memory create to memory component, that is nothing but uh, <clears throat> yeah, that's nothing but hoisting basically. Hoisting is all about uh, during memory creation phase, allocating space for variables and functions. That's hoisting, that's it. Okay. So never say that the variables are being moved up or down, they stay wherever they are. We're simply scanning through the entire file during memory creation phase and reserving space or, or allocating space for every single variable and function. That is nothing but hoisting. Okay. And this is the consequence of hoisting. This is the effect of hoisting. Okay. Because of hoisting, we're able to call this function before it has been defined. Okay. That is the side effect of hoisting basically. Okay, so let's, uh, I'll do something now. See, I'll just give you guys some uh, like practice problems, okay? And try to solve that. So let's say that I have, um, okay, so I have uh, an array of strings. Like this. I want you to return as a new string, which is like this, like this array of, uh, you should be connected to like this. So whatever methods you think you can use, use them and convert this thing into something like this. See, I'll copy and paste this inside the chat. So I want you guys to code it and check the answer at your system and then paste the answer here. Okay. It's basically a one liner. It's a very simple problem. So I'll give you some time. Just uh, do it right now. Okay. Tanzila, look at my entire answer. I want everything in lowercase here.
very good keshav that's the correct answer yeah so i'll just give a solution here guys because keshav is already present the answer so see first of all uh, i want to like convert this array into a string right so a simple way to do that is using the join method so using join you can give any uh, like what do you want to join them on so if you don't give any argument here and if you check what the console log does see we simply get um, what 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 dot join will do is it'll take every single character and it will join them with a comma it basically takes this entire thing and joins every element with a comma because that is a default delimiter okay delimiter simply means ki what do you want to use as a, as a separator between every single element okay if you don't give anything here it's basically this like this is the default delimiter but if you remove that if you're saying that i don't want any delimiter then we simply join all of them into one string like this now i also want to convert this into lower case i'll simply do dot to lower case and i'll do this that's it okay all right so let's move on to the next question this will be a little interesting function uh stuff okay let's say that i have an object like this id 1 and the sale exity side to part i'm going to pass <clears throat> see this one basically needs uh, needs city state country continent and then needs the id and we have to just to console.log all of these things like this now i have to basically call this function and i need to pass all of these variables right i need to pass a object dot city object dot state country content so on so let's do that so i'll do object dot city object dot state object dot country object dot uh, continent and object dot id as so a finally i get everything in the right order but the thing is look at this code has isn't it very long and it's it's error prone which means that if i do a simple mistake in the order if i put this at the very beginning right then everything gets messed up basically uh, uh, <clears throat> the id will be in city and city will be in state and state will be in country and so on so even a small mistake will actually cause a lot of problem okay so when you have something like this okay basically uh, see you know, i want you guys to tell me a way which i can simplify this okay i don't want to actually uh, deal with passing these things in the correct order all the time i want a way wherein i can simply pass in something here and get it in the right order uh, the call the base okay so i have to uh, i give you a clue right now you have to make a change here and make a change here also i need to be able to i want to simplify this basic mujhe simplify karna hai both sir so i want to simplify the whole thing so that i don't have to pass this line by line every single time because it's obviously you can make a small change and lot of things will be in uh, in trouble right so how do i make it a lot easier and just think uh, there is no right or wrong answer here just about like brainstorming okay 
Okay, you're saying Keshav, we can use uh, rest and spread. Can you explain? Like, can you tell me where I should use rest and where should we use the spread operator? Function stuff object console log object. Okay, so Tanzila, so I would agree that that is one way. So we can simply do object here and pass the object here. Okay. And then give all of these things here. Okay. And that is one way. <clears throat> but Yahapur, is there a better way? What if I don't want all of these things? What if I just want to pass like these things? I don't want ID, let's say, which ID nature ye. So what can I do? Let me tell you what I would do. I would simply destructure. <clears throat> I want city, state, and country and continent. That's it. Very good, Tanzila. Yes, that is the correct answer. Very, very good. Okay, so this is the simplest way. See, that is why I'm saying that our object destructuring is extremely, extremely uh, uh, very helpful, basically. In fact, the interesting part is I can simply do this uh, within stuff. I'll remove this, I'll remove ID here, and that's it. Now, the order can be anything here. Order can be anything here, but because it's destructuring, they'll always match up. Right? So, this obviously makes sense, right? Okay. Okay, now I'm going to give you guys, uh, I'm going to explain a few loops and then I'll give you one, <clears throat> one kind of like tough challenge, okay? <clears throat> you guys already know what object.keys does. Let's say that you have an object like this uh, ID one and score of 100 and uh, age. Of 200, whatever. So if you use object dot values of object, what does it return, guys? What does what is the type of uh, value that we get back? It's an array, basically. So we get back an array of all the values only. Okay. So if you observe, let me just reduce this. Yeah, so we basically get back an array of all the values. Okay, just this one, 100 and 200, we get back only them. If you do object dot keys, we get back all the keys. Okay, we have one more thing called as object dot entries, which I already spoke about. Okay, now this gives us back an array of arrays where <clears throat> the first array will be the key and the value. And second will be key and the value, key and the value. So basically what's happening is uh, object entries here will create an array basically, SR, okay? Within this array here, the first array will be the key here and the value. Since they'll have the key, they'll have the value. And second element would be again an array, which will be this key and the value. Key and the value. And third will basically be again, our key and the value. And this is our, uh, our object dot entry. So yehi humko milega when we do this. Now keep this in mind. And the question I have for you is basically, let's say that you have um, a query like this. No, 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 you have an object like this, area of one and uh, city of Hyderabad. And um, what else? State of Telangana, let's say. 
Now the object can contain any keys and values, guys. This is just an example object. But imagine that there is a function, which will be like transform, which receives any object that you pass and to return the object in a, in a particular format. The format is it should be ID uh, key is equal to value and key is equal to value and key is equal to value. How many of our keys values are there? Should create those many pairs like this. Okay. Which means that if I call my transform with this object here, okay, the result should basically be something like this. What is the first key? It is ID. What is the value? It is one. So ID is equal to one and should be city equal to Hyderabad and should be state. Now, see, I want a string like this. You have to return a string which will basically convert the object into this pattern. Okay. This entire thing is one string guys. It's one string entirely. Okay. What if I change the keys? What if I make it like a one B two C three and D four. Okay. What should be the value right now? What, what should I be expecting here? It should be a is equal to one and B is equal to two and C is equal to three and B is equal to four. So I want something like this right now. So I, I want, I want this function to return something like this, like whatever be the object, object can be anything. Object can contain any, uh, any key value pairs, but ultimately this function should receive that object and return this thing. Is the question clear guys? Is the question clear, guys? Guys, question clear. I can nobody saying yes. Let me repeat the question, Prakash. <clears throat> okay. We have an object here, okay? Like object here. There is a function. Now this function can accept any object. Okay. <clears throat> this function should accept any object and it should return a string like this, which will be in this format. The format should be the key one and value one and key two and value two and key three and value three. Okay. So wait, uh, Let's go here. For example, I have this object. Let's take this object here. Okay. Now what I want to say, I want to create a string. Basically a string under, I have to take every single key value pair and add them here with equal to. So I should take a, the first key and equal to one. Okay. And then give and. Because this is one key value pair. Then do B is equal to two. So B is equal to two. Then give and because this is one more key value pair. So then C is equal to three and B is equal to four. Okay. So, so I want, uh, I want you to write a function which will accept any object with, with any number of keys, whatever key value pairs it has. And it returns a string like this. The string should be in the key value pair format where every key value pair is separated by the ampersand symbol. Okay, this is a separator basically. This and this and this. Okay. And between every key value pair, you have the equal to here. Equal to, equal to, equal to, equal to. Okay. Now is it clear, guys? Keshav, Tanzila, is it clear? Okay. 
okay then just uh, give it a shot okay it it is definitely not an easy question but you can do it because uh, you already know what what methods to use see i'll give you a clue you can use any of these methods object dot values or you can use object dot keys or you can use object dot entries and you <clears throat> you can use any of the loops or you can use map function also basically you have to use a combination of any of these three plus any of these two okay i have given you a big uh, big clue here use any of these three plus any of these two also this is what i ask usually uh, usually in my uh, interview questions okay i'll give you some time okay abhi try to solve it so uh, so i can give you this uh, question i'll paste it in the chat i have paste kar liya hai so give it a shot and let me know once okay at least if you're able to come very close let me know theek hai Anjali I hope you have written this code on your own can you explain what the uh, the has own property does why don't you unmute yourself and explain the code you've written huh? Anjali can you unmute yourself and explain the solution The Anjali is not responding let's look at what cash okay go on uh, go on Anjali Go on, Tamsila. Are you there? This seems to be some problem. Go on. Uh, I'm accepting your uh, request. Like in. Okay. No problem. Anyway, so I'll look at what Keshav has given here. Let's look at the answer. Let's paste the answer here. Okay, so we have stuff object. The answer is called empty string. You're going through the object and you're saying answer plus key plus is equal to object of key and then and. Then finally you're simply like slicing because you want to remove the last one and. Okay, this I've understood. Uh, very good job, Keshav. Let me look. Ha, so, guys, uh, look at the solution. Keshav has done a very good job, and the answer is correct. So, 
very good job so you have used a simple for uh, i'll tell you what is happening here guys if you guys didn't understand what is happening so i'll name or so i'll just remove all of this i'll call it as transform i'll call this as parent object i'll pass this here it's called as transform we have an object we are passing to the function now uh, <clears throat> we are creating an answer string first with an empty string now we are looping through the object which means that uh, in the first loop the key will be id a second loop may key will be name and third loop may key will be c uh, will be sub theek okay? hai so yahan par ab in the first iteration or first loop our key is uh, is id theek hai our key is is id here so what is happening here is we are taking answer which is the existing string we we'll take this and we'll do a key which is id i'll do an uh, equal to and we'll do object of key which means you simply give in the value of this it is one okay, and we are also adding the ampersand it is this theek okay? hai this will result in id is equal to 1 and we get this at the end of the first iteration now second iteration mein y hoga fir se our second iteration will simply be key will be this time name and this time uh, the answer is this this time sorry it will be this and the key will be name this time and equal to a name will be keshav and keshav has spelled his own name wrong we have and, and now we get uh keshav and name is equal to keshav it is k k sub like this and and again okay that's how we and then we go to the third iteration okay samajh mein aa raha hai na what the solution is we are on third iteration now and the key is nothing but uh, the subject which is as you be and this time our answer is the previous one which is this one so we get this and uh, our key will basically be sub value will be this and we'll still have and which means we we'll basically have uh, and sub is equal to this and so the problem here is we have this unnecessary and at the very end Okay, so we have to just remove the last one, and has removed it like this. Okay, basically at the end of the loop, uh, we arrive here. Okay, this will be our answer. We have to remove this last one ampersand, right? उसके लिए उसने ये किया है बस. Guys, is this clear? And uh, everybody other than Keshav, is this clear? very good job yakeshav okay now what we'll do is um okay other other solutions if anybody else uh, okay is anybody else still trying i can wait if they're still trying just say yes if you're still trying guys i'll wait for you Yes, type yes. Uh, don't send me the emoji. Yes, if you are still trying this, type yes. No. Okay, so I'll tell you one more solution that is possible with this is. Perfect, Tanjira. So that would actually have been my solution also. So I'll tell you what Tanjira has done. is is that so basically you getting object of entries uh this will basically create an array of arrays right so we'll basically have multiple array of arrays like this and within this we'll have uh we'll have our id we'll have the value and within this we'll have the second key which is name and we'll have like this 
Within third one, again, we have sub and we have JS. Okay, we have this. But within this, what she's doing is uh, she's mapping over this, okay? And she is destructuring the key and value and she's just creating this, okay? Which means that Yahapur will simply taking ID is equal to one, like this, and she's adding it to, a, uh, to an array. So we'll basically get a string like this. And we get name is equal to th of like this. And the third element within the array will be sub is equal to j. So we get this. Okay. Now we have an array of all the key value pairs. Now what is left is to join them with the ampersand. So simply Okay, so after this, what is happening is we take these values and we keep joining them with and. Okay. Like this, that's it. All right, so again, uh, this thing is nothing but array destructuring. So I hope you guys remember this. Okay, so this is also a very good solution, Dandala. Very good job. All right. So I think I'll stop it here. I don't think anybody else is trying. So I'll see you guys on Monday. Uh, guys, have a great weekend. Okay. Uh, from next week, we'll finish off JavaScript. Uske baad we'll start off with React. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Anzila. Thanks, Keshav. Uh, I'll see you on Monday. Bye-bye. Take care, guys.